Good afternoon. Is Johnny Heineken the fastest in the world? He's certainly the fastest around here. No one can keep up nor catch him. As I was observing, the question that came to me is what does he do differently? His gear is fast, and yet there are plenty of people on mic, lab, foils, flux wings, ultralight custom boards, and he is still the fastest. Maybe he has some super secret method of tuning his foil that only him and Mike know about. This day was the first day I watched him traverse the course. And with the sun out, I could see that he took different lines from everyone else. There are plenty of folks out there that are older, with more experience, been racing longer. There are also guys who are younger, stronger, and he is still faster. I see him as a master of his craft, whether it's winging in flat water, winging at the point, foil surfing out at Ocean Beach. He's doing stuff that nobody else is doing. Seems like a combination of natural ability, years of practice and dedication and refining his gear. I mean, race or no race, I love watching Johnny and everyone bring in foiling to these new levels. Like his parents said to me, he's beautiful to watch. I mean, given the reality that Johnny comes in in the head every time. Can we still call it a race if the same person wins every time? Do we need a race to know who's the fastest? Like Haley said, he was out there and Johnny just came whizzing by. Do we need a race to point out the obvious? Even the birds know who's the fastest. As I was filming, I talked to one former racer who said he's already over it. You know, that has me wondering, what would a gathering look like where everyone wins? In professional sports, the big leagues, NFL... MLB, NBA, or even the Olympics, or even the NCAA, the rules are contrived. It's made up based on what makes the owners the most money. Modeled after the Roman games, the gladiators destroying each other for entertainment. Similar to the rules of economic systems, hierarchy systems. The rules were created and they changed to make those in charge the most money or control. Any action that seems like care or concern for the players or fans is a means to an end. Watching the Super Bowl or any big league championship, the winners are celebrated and elated. They're just high on life, stoked, champagne popping, celebrating. While the losers have these long faces, the towels are over their head. They look demoralized and defeated. I looked up the etymology of the word defeat. It means to undo, to destroy, to annul. I don't want to destroy or undo my friends. Do you? Even the word victory means to conquer or vanquish. Is this what we aspire to and how we want to relate to each other? For me, it's no surprise. All our nation states are built on this. It's a plan. It's a blueprint. It's colonialism in general. Conquer the indigenous people and undo everything their ancestors stewarded for thousands of years. Fertile land, abundant food, clean air and water, community, all destroyed. And the process continues to this day. Most of the materials used to make our gear comes from conquest. The people making it were forced off their land. And now working in a factory is often the only choice they have if they want to eat. I like to ask questions. One of the questions that comes to me when I observe competition is, can everyone win? The obvious answer is no. Even if we look at hierarchy in general, or you know whether it's communism, capitalism, whatever the system is, can everyone win? Can everyone be a billionaire, a president at the top? Is it pyramidal in, in nature and that only a few can actually be at the top, just the nature of the structure? And in order for there to be one or a few at the top, this can only exist by having a lot at the bottom. In order to win the Super Bowl, every other team has to lose. This is just the fact of the system. In a race, Olympics, 100-yard dash, whatever it is, any 500, one person wins and the only way that's possible is if everyone else loses. I studied economics for, for decades, years, lots of different systems. And one question that was never asked or observation was never pointed out is that in order for someone like Bill Gates to have his lifestyle, there have to be millions of people who live in poverty, who don't have that lifestyle. I mean, if Bill Gates' house cleaner became a billionaire, would they still clean the toilets? How about the jet mechanics or the pilots? Would they still fly the planes, work on his jets? In order for the founder of a giant company like Microsoft to be the richest person in the world, there have to be a lot of people just getting by. In order for some to be uber wealthy and have hundreds of billions, most of the people have to make less than a million. It's just a fact of the system. I remember years ago hearing about Brad Gerlach starting some kind of different surfing event. I don't remember the details. I just got the sense 
that he wanted a, a different way of, of getting together and, and surfing together. And most of what I'm saying here comes from my own longing. I want to participate. I want to be in events with people. I want to gather. I want to have something every day, every Friday, every Saturday, all day. And yet the race system, it just doesn't appeal to me. It doesn't grab me. I have no interest. I don't even know if I have answers. I just know. I feel it. I want to get together. I want to do stuff together to be part of something and have us all win. where We all feel good regardless of the outcome. What I really noticed in my travels especially in Fiji, is that none of the kids cried. No tantrums. The parents were happy to let us take their kids, be with them, no concerns. And that was a strong, stark contrast to our way of raising kids. So I just want to extend that to our, how we get together, our races, our events. Like have it where there are no long faces, no defeats, where everyone wins and feels good and we're all together in a good way. Just yesterday, I was out at Berkeley Best day of the year by far. It was going off. I had so many fun rides. I was so stoked. I was just hooting at the top of my lungs. And yet I came in. I was longing for somebody to share it with. I was one of the few, often the only person out. Everyone else had either came in or they had something else going on. But I came in just to hang out in the parking lot and share the stoke. That that was more fun in that moment than being out by myself. So I hope this was watchable and enjoyable and you got something out of this. Thank you so much for watching. YouTube has the super thanks. I have the website. Come on over, check out the Learn to Fool course, plenty of other resources, meditation, harmony. And so thanks so much for watching. And I really hope to see us out there and, and hope we can come together and gather.